Okay, now we're getting ready to um, put on the middle shaft here that's going to connect both gear boxes together. And you start, we take our QD bushing. I'm going to start with the gearbox closest to the motor. I'm going to apply my QD bushing with the step key. And you notice this shaft is smaller than this shaft. So you want to get as much shaft inside this as you can. So I'm going to bring it right to about where it meets the fan shroud here. Okay, now we're going to apply our coupling flange. You want to make sure that you have your bolts already installed into the coupling flange before you mount it onto the QD bushing. And when you, you want to make sure your coupling flange, these raised parts, are facing outwards. And you want to make sure that you have a flat washer on these bolts also. The bolts to mount your coupling flange to your QD bushing is a 5 16 18, 2 and a half in length. And they will bolt from this way, bolt onto the QD bushing. Okay, when you tighten up these bolts, you want to make sure that your QD bushing is going on evenly. Uh, so you want to turn these nice and slow. You don't get one too tight than the other. So you want to walk this thing in to keep this nice and straight. And I will torque these at 15 foot-pounds. Click. 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 These are your flexible plates that will mount to these bolts right here. I'm adding four of them. And they just slide right over the bolts, line them up with the holes. Okay, the flexible plates, they're in place. Now I'm going to add the spacers that will go after the flexible plates. Then I'm going to take my hex nut and just hand tie them on there just to get them started. Okay, now I have this gearbox pretty much built, built up. I have my coupling flange with my bolts. 5 8 11 bolts with a flat washer. Then I have my flexible plates and then 3 16 in diameter washer and then my hex nut, which are just hand tied at this point. Okay, now we're going to move over to the other gearbox. This shaft is a little longer than the other one. I'm going to take my QD bushing and basically we're going to be doing the same thing we did on the other gearbox except this will be in a different spot. I'm going to bring that flush with this shaft right here. 
that's where that will seat. Okay, we're still on the other side of the machine, the second gearbox. What I've done is I have made this one identical to this one. I have my 5 8 11 bolt with my flat washer, my coupling flange with the flexible plates, four of them, with the 3 16 in diameter washer, and the 5 8 11 hex nut, hand tight at this point. Okay, our next step is we're going to pre-assemble the center shaft and we have our feathering which is now an inch and a half bigger. This shaft is an inch and a half. We're going to put our feathering into our coupling flange. This coupling flange that holds the feathering is different than the other three which holds the QD bushings. This is a different part number. Pay attention to your part numbers when it comes to your coupling flange. You want to slide your feathering into the coupling flange flush or just a little bit behind that. Try to get it flush. I'm going to slide my shaft through the feathering. Feathering bolts are loose. Then the side with the keyway, I have my step key, QD bushing, and coupling flange. That will mount. So that's your pre-assembled center shaft. Okay, on your coupling flanges, pay attention to the uh, raised edge, how they're facing. Tell me when you're ready. Okay, I've put the middle shaft that's been pre-assembled into the machine. These are still loose. I've added five and a half inch pieces of wood just so it's not as awkward so you can handle, you can work in here. Uh, your feathering will go to the gearbox that's attached to the motor. Feathering will go to the gearbox attached to the motor. And I'm going to first work on the gearbox that is on the right hand side of the machine and I'm going to hook these two together, put my bolts in and torque it all down. Okay, where we're at now is all I have done here is taking the shaft off the pieces of wood by adding my other six bolts into the uh, coupling flange. Now I'm able to work with this. Both gearboxes are still separate. They are not locked together yet. And what I want to do here is get this shaft flush. You can, you're able to look back in here and you can see the shaft. You want that to be flush with the feathering is where you want to end up tightening that down at. I'm first going to work on this side with these bolts hand tightened nice and free, hand tighten. I'm going to torque this QD bushing into this again walking it in nice and even. Very important, must be walked in nice and even. And I'm going to torque these to 15 foot-pounds. Okay, when I start to tighten these down this QD bushing is going to want to move, which is going to want to move this and move this. After I have torqued these down, this shaft is still move. It's going to still be movable. After these are torqued down, you're going to want to bring this this way if need be to make sure these are together. So they're not going to be in a bind when you torque these bolts down. That that explain right? 
Okay, I've torqued these to 15 foot-pounds. Now I'm going to move on and now I want to come over here make sure that my gap, there is no gap here. If there is gap, once again I'm going to just slide this shaft over this way a little bit to fill the gap. Now I'm going to torque these bolts, the big 5 8 bolts. Each cut. Okay, our gearboxes are still separated from each other. And now I'm going to come and torque these. Each one of these 5 8 bolts has a flat washer. It has a 3 16 in diameter washer. And it has a hex nut. Each bolt will be 12 bolts. So I'm going to torque these down. I'm going to torque them to 120 foot pounds. Okay, you want to make sure that your uh, fetter ring is right in the middle of your coupling flange, is centered inside here. Very important that's centered inside the coupling flange and you want your shaft to either come flush with the fetter ring or stick out of the fetter ring a little bit. You do not want your shaft to be inside this fetter ring too far in. Flush or sticking out. Bam. These three. Yep. Build the ring. Let me mark the ones we've already. Okay, the point we're at now, we've just torqued these down to 120 foot-pounds. The gearboxes are still not hooked together. They're still separate. That's because we haven't tightened our fettering yet. Still loose. Now we're gonna move up here to the top crank arms and the bottom crank arms. And we're gonna apply our alignment bar, which is what the 3816 holes here are for. And what we want to do is take this crank arm to the far out position, like so. For both crank arms are facing outwards. And then with my alignment bar, I will put across the machine surface on the crank arms on top and bottom and I'm going to bolt it to the crank arms. That is going to, what this is doing is keeping the crank arms straight where we can obtain, get the slop out of these crank arms also. Okay, when you're putting on your alignment bars and you go to tighten down the bolts, you want to make sure that the machine surface on the crank arms is sitting flat against the alignment bar. You want to physically look for gaps. There should be no gaps between the crank arm and the alignment bar. And you want to physically put your head down in the bottom and check for the same thing. Any gaps, it should be sitting nice and flat. And keep in mind, the uh, bolts in the crank arms are loose at this time. Okay, what we're going to do now, after our alignment bar has been put on the crank arms, we're going to put on, put on our counterweight. 30 pound counterweight, there's two of them. You have your bar. What we want to do, we want a bar and a weight on each gearbox. The best place to put on this gearbox would be right here between the QD bushing and the gearbox, right on the shaft. Then on the right hand side of the machine's gearbox, you want to take off the lockout. This bar here for the lockout, you want to take it off and then apply your other bar and weight to this shaft. This is uh, getting all the backlash out of both gearboxes and putting them on the same plane. Okay, after we've tightened the alignment bars, we've added our weights on each shaft of each gearbox. Now our next step is to go up back up to the crank arms and I'm going to tighten these down. First I'm going to torque them to 50 pounds. Then I'm going to go back around them and torque them to 80 pounds. 
<laughs> then I'm gonna go back around and torque them to 120. That's so, the reason I'm doing that instead of going straight for the 120 is that I'm not over tightening one side or the other, reefing on them real hard. So I'm gonna gradually torque these up to 120. Okay, I've now torqued these. Before I torqued these, I did take each bolt out and put and re loctited with red Loctite 260. So these are torqued now to 120 foot pounds. Only thing left to do now is to tighten our feathering, which is going to connect our two gearboxes. I'm going to tighten these in a star pattern, star style pattern, and I'm going to end up torquing those to 13 foot pounds. And after I'm done torquing those, I, then I'm free to take everything off that I put on. My weights, alignment bar, and uh, put my rod ends back on, torque the caps back down, relock tight and torque the caps back down to 80 foot-pounds, and check my miking and we are done.